Hi, I'm Emily Huber, Pioneer Field Agronomist in West Central Illinois. Today I'm giving my final observations on the May 9th, 2020 freeze event. You notice I've changed my terminology from frost to freeze. Originally when we were talking this, we weren't sure how low those temperatures were going to get and if it was just going to create frost on the beans. But what we actually saw that May 9th was that temperatures dropped low enough. They were at 27 degrees in some areas at ground level. So that indicates that we had freezing temperatures that caused severe damage to some fields in the area. As I gave my last update, if you've been following along, I had a an update about three days after the frost. But really what we struggled with was that we say we can evaluate things in three to five days, but we need three to five days of warm growing temperatures. The temperatures following the frost had highs in the 50s and low 60s, so our daily GDU accumulation was really low. So we had to wait a little bit longer to be able to truly evaluate what the outcome was of some of these plants. The ones that we were still struggling with at that three-day mark were the plants that had either healthy cotyledons and a healthy stem, but the growing point was singed, or had, same thing, singed growing point, maybe singed cotyledons, but a healthy stem, hypocotyl right below the cotyledons. And what came of those two plants was if the, basically if the cotyledons survived, if they were still healthy, but that growing point, and that growing point had died, had been frozen off, those were essentially able to create that uh, auxiliary bud come up and create the new next stem. So in most cases we, were see we saw that those beans were able to survive this. If we had beans that had a healthy hypocotyl, healthy stem, but the cotyledons were, were singed, the growing point was singed, essentially those plants ended up dead. Even though they still had promise in the stem, the main, or those auxiliary buds were not able to grow up in that case because those cotyledons were not able to support that plant any longer. So. Uh, those are kind of the two, that's kind of those plants that we were looking at that we were uncertain of at the time. Uh, other things that I found throughout my observations and talking with a couple other agronomists in our territory, Brad Mason and Mike Navaretti, uh, we saw that soybeans planted April 6th and earlier seem to have taken a hit more than soybeans planted April 7th through 10th. So those April 6th beans and earlier, they were up out of the ground a little bit further, maybe a little bit further along, where those beans that were planted April 7th through 10th still were coming up, might have just been at the soil surface and were protected a little bit there. Uh, the other thing that we talked about earlier was the potential for uh, conventional till dark soils to maybe buffer some of the cooled, cooler temperatures we thought we might see. And I don't think in this case that that really happened mostly because of the temperatures that we saw prior to the frost really were not that warm so our soil hadn't packed in that much heat to be able to buffer uh, those temperatures like we thought would happen so when we look at our no-till fields or some fields with some more residue cover we did see that those were buffering the beans a little bit better and maybe the beans were um, growing underneath that residue and were protected or the this, this soil temperatures were cooler when they were planted so those beans were just a little bit further behind. So that's kind of a look at where we're at. Um, my final observations for uh, this year, you know, we were able to make some okay decisions up front. Um, if those plants were completely brown uh, within a couple of days after the frost event, we were able to make a good decision. But if we had those plants that had cotyledons that were healthy and the main growing point, those were the ones that we need to wait on in the future, kind of evaluate and see if those are gonna be able to grow out of it. So if you have any questions, uh, you can contact your local Pioneer sales rep or your local Pioneer agronomist and we would be happy to help. Thank you. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.